Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to our latest installment of PS113 Introduction to Psychology, Chapter 8, and this is titled Human Development. In Part 1, and this will be a relatively short lecture, I want to go over several key ideas, just three to be exact, and these include the definition of developmental psychology, how a longitudinal design works, and how a cross-sectional design works. Let's dive in, shall we? This chapter is essentially about the vast area known as developmental psychology, which we will define as the study of how humans grow, develop, and change throughout the lifespan. Now, think about this. We human beings spend proportionally a much longer time growing and developing compared to any other animal. For example, most animals are defined as being immature or mature. But as human beings, we have a, a lengthy transitional stage in between childhood and adulthood called adolescence. Think back to chapter 5 and the emphasis placed on the capacity to learn and how easily we do this. We don't have instincts in the way animals have instincts. This formal transitional period is almost unheard of in any other animal species. Now, it used to be thought that psychological development in areas such as mm, intelligence, personality, and self-esteem was pretty much over with by the time you reached your 20s. Well, now we know Development and growth can continue in different life areas for much longer than that, certainly into middle age and perhaps even longer into old age. It seems that we're always, we are constantly changing and developing. For this reason, developmental psychology has several nicknames. It's been nicknamed the study of development from the womb to the tomb or the cradle to the casket. Also, if you were a woman as recently as the 1950s, just 67 years ago, and you were interested in studying psychology, you would have been encouraged to go into the field of human development. What do you think that would be? Well, this is where we study the babies and the infants and the children and sexist thinking determine that this would be the best fit for you. Well, now we know today women can choose to specialize in any field they want to, including developmental psychology, but any other area that interests them. That's a good thing. Think back to chapter one and how we discussed different research strategies, common research strategies. Well, in developmental psychology, we have two additional strategies kind of unique to the field that I want to mention and illustrate at this time. And these are the longitudinal design and the cross-sectional design. Let's come up with a research question that we would like to study as an example. Are you interested in the development of self-esteem generally as a group as they, as they grow up? Does self-esteem on average increase as children get older? Are there generally bumps in the road where self-esteem may take a hit but predictably bounces back? These are important questions which, by the way, have been studied in developmental psychology. A longitudinal design is one way to go about this and Here's our example of how it might work. We could randomly sample 30 kindergartners from all the preschools in the county to serve as subjects in our study. We would bring them down to NMJC on a prearranged Saturday morning. And we would do interviewing and testing to assess self-esteem in each one of them. Now, this is quite a project already. But guess what? We would bring them all back again the following year when they're first graders and do it again. 
and then we would bring them all back again the next year when they're second graders. In fact, we would bring this cohort of 30 children back each year as they get one year older for 12 years through high school graduation and assess development and changes in self-esteem. That would be a lot of data, wouldn't it? Over many years, and we could see how trends in self-esteem develops. We define the longitudinal design as when the same individuals are tested repeatedly at different points in their lives. The cross-sectional design, on the other hand, is an alternative approach. And here is how it might look. We could randomly sample 30 kindergartners from all the preschools in the county to serve as subjects in our study. Now you might be saying, hey, we just did that in the longitudinal design. Well, yeah, so far it looks like the longitudinal design, but here is where we diverge. We would also randomly sample 30 first graders from the county. Now these are different children who are one year older. We would randomly sample 30 second graders, 30 third graders, and so on through all the grades K through 12. We would bring them down to NMJC on a Saturday morning. Now we've got, gosh, we've got several hundred children here. We would need a lot of psychologists to participate in this project. We would do our research. We would finish with them maybe early afternoon, say goodbye, and we never see them again. So in a cross-sectional design, different individuals of different ages are tested at one point in their development. In the longitudinal design, we gathered a great deal of data using the same children over the course of many years. But in a cross-sectional design, we gathered the same amount of data but did it all in one day using different children. There are strengths and weaknesses to using each approach, but in theory, we should come up with the same general results. Remember, a longitudinal design, a longitudinal study takes a long time. That's the key, longitudinal design, first four letters, what's the word, long? It takes a long time. But a cross-sectional design study is much quicker. And we look at a cross-section of all the ages we're interested in in one snapshot. By the way, what do you think we would find from our research? Well, if children in Lee County are similar to children all across the United States, and that's a, that's a very safe assumption, we would see high levels of self-esteem already in kindergartners. We would see self-esteem take a hit, generally speaking, as children enter junior high school, but then bounce back. And then we'd see another hit, another dip in self-esteem on average upon entering high school. But that would bounce back pretty quickly. Well, that's all for part one. I'll see you real quickly in part two.